Sometimes, in a rare twist of fate, a horror game will come out just in time to make us reflect on current real terrors. Yet it does not cease with art imitating life. Sometimes it goes a step further to push you into making difficult and perhaps immoral choices towards conquering a greater threat. Many of us go through life trying to avoid such quagmires, such a perfect storm of reflective horror gameplay. Yet today, that is what we are given. What game has given us all of this? It's Vampire for the Nintendo Switch. Yes, it is weird that a game like this comes out as close as it did to a global situation so similar to a situation from a hundred years ago. I'm actually not sure if that observation is scarier than the vampires in this very game. In Vampire you play as Dr. Jonathan Reed, a World War I veteran who returns home just in time for the Spanish flu epidemic to ravage his London home. But to make matters worse, he's also been transformed into a vampire which throws him into the steep and bloody underworld. Now John has to find the vamp who turned him and stop the whole vampire threat while also battling a deadly epidemic. I don't want to get too much into how everything blends together as that would lead to spoilers, but this mix of threats and your character being a bloodsucker lead the way to some pretty deep story elements. It's actually a big part of what keeps you playing, learning more about this dark piece of historical fiction that's a little too close to our modern reality. Depressing comparisons aside, this game does have great presentation. While there are moments of stiff animation and awkwardly placed loading screens that messed up the pacing, the visuals are still high quality. Characters are well designed and the environment is made to make you feel like you're living in a real city that's on the verge of collapse from two enemies, flu and vampires. Even within the first few minutes, I was really impressed by the sound in this game. The sound effects are realistic for a game about vampires, but it's more the music and voice acting. The voice acting is all top notch and it brings a real air of humanity to the characters you interact with as well as your protagonist. The music uses some dark, suspenseful tunes when you're facing vampires or vampire hunters, but for the rest of the game you have this dramatic score of strings and choir singers. It works so well to highlight the sadness and terror of Jonathan's personal struggle as well as both the plagues his city faces. The main gameplay elements of this action horror RPG are combat, investigations, and choices. First, the combat. You fight other types of vampires and human vampire hunters. Throughout each fight, you have to bear in mind your health, your stamina, and your blood supply. Health for obvious reasons, but stamina is what lets you attack with your weapons while blood lets you use special, devastating, and sometimes freakish vampire powers. So you're strategizing how to kill each foe based on how they fight and how strong they are, while you're also staying on your toes to move and dodge so you deal more damage than you take. Then to gain more blood and recover some health, you have to bite some enemies. Which does more for you as you level yourself up, but you need to hit them with your stun attack enough times in order to do any biting, and some foes will be more resistant to this than others. It's not quite as fluid of a combat system as Batman Arkham games or Assassin's Creed, but for a vampire game it actually makes sense. Depending on the toughness of each enemy, you may have to adjust your strategy, especially for the boss fights. Part of this is leveling up your character using earned XP. Before you go to sleep, you can use XP to unlock new offensive and defensive moves, then upgrade them to give yourself more of a fighting chance against bigger and stronger enemies. Like most RPGs, you have some freedom of what to unlock slash upgrade and when provided you have a good amount of XP first. It's just as deep as an RPG fan would like. There are a few different ways to earn XP. Winning more fights, solving more investigations, and draining NPCs of their blood. So you'll be quite busy in this open world London, or semi-open world as some have called it. Probably because it's not very big or all that spacious, but it is big enough that you'll want a fast travel system which unfortunately this game doesn't have. I mean this dark, run-down, vampire-invested version of London is compelling to explore, but I was hoping for some kind of fast travel so I could avoid having to constantly fight vampire hunters as I go from one district to another, especially when I'm returning to a district I've already been to. But let's get to the NPCs, which are a big part of this game. I was actually really impressed with how fleshed out the NPCs are and how deep the system for interviewing them is. There's branches into the conversations, there's questions you can't ask without getting a hint from someone else in the district first, and sometimes you'll have to get a hint by choosing just the right response to something they said. Answering wrong actually means you'll never get that hint. Each of these people has their own personality, backstory, and social circle, and it actually matters in the game. Now the main reason for interviewing everybody is to get clues for both main game and side investigations. So while you might get annoyed with how much talking is in this game, that talking is a significant part of the challenge. You're using everything you learn to gather more out of the next person, then search the district for some important object or missing person. 
You also find clues from following blood trails, finding important letters and documents, and mixing medicines together to cure the citizens of their various ailments. Makes sense since Jonathan works as a doctor, and of course, a doctor providing medicine is going to make people more willing to chat. This all may seem like busy work with talking and finding medical ingredients, but it's all part of solving the mysteries of what's happening in town and what happened to you. Plus, you do get XP and money for your troubles. But doing all this accomplishes something else. It makes the blood richer. Bringing me to the next big aspect, choice. It's not just the choice in interview responses, but also who to give an important object to, and more importantly, whether or not to kill an NPC to gain the XP you've built up in them from all the talking and medicine and investigation favors. It starts with deciding to mesmerize them at any point in a conversation, assuming your mesmerized level is equal to or greater than their brain power, then leading them to a dark corner and once there, deciding to feed upon them or change course at the last minute and release them. Now, sure, if you've done everything for them first, eating them will boost your XP by a lot, but every kill also has consequences. These can be big or small depending on who you kill and when, but a death in the district always hurts its stability which is already in jeopardy thanks to a flu epidemic. All that plus when you get to know an NPC only to end up killing them, you do kind of feel like an asshole. Who will assist Dorothea helping our comrades now that I die? Great, now I have guilt! Sometimes in a main story segment I made choices that I thought were safe middle ground choices only for some terrible consequence to happen the next night. Since every time you level up, a full day passes by and something happens in the districts while you're sleeping, you have to keep that in mind as well before you level up each time. There's a lot to carefully consider when playing this game which adds a deep layer of immersion. It really does feel like your choices and actions matter which is a big appeal to RPG fans. Vampire is one of the deepest horror RPGs I've ever played. Although some of its concepts could have been delivered better, it's still a great game for people who like deep and engaging experiences in horror games. It's currently available for about $30, which is a great price for it. If it sounds great to you, pick it up. Well, that was Vampire, but that wasn't the last review of this year's Spooky Month. We've got one more coming at you right on Halloween. See you there. In the meantime, watch out for monsters.